Hey everybody, it's Tamara with Girl Changed. I've been talking for the last week or so, week and a half, probably about having joy. Yeah, yeah, about two weeks. Been talking to you about joy, having joy in your life, and 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 happiness and true joy, actually. And um, and that you know th through various ways, through you know finding the joy from your youth. Look at simple things, finding what makes you happy. Um, doing art, going for a run, doing just different things, right? So I've talked a lot about that and and posting some, a lot of different things about that because that's what we need to do. But here's the thing. Some people might think that um, I really don't know what I'm talking about. Like, um, how could I possibly know what it's like? And how can I just say, you know, just to simply have joy when, you know, they might be going through a really hard time and that it's hard to find joy. I saw a post the other day it wasn't mine, but it was on somebody else's. And um, there was a particular lady who had who was stuck in being miserable and just um, she was just stuck there. And I and I started to feel really bad because I remembered back when I was there, being stuck. And but she sounds a lot better than what I was. I I was in a really bad way. I was in a really bad situation and. Um, I kind of wanted to just share briefly with you about my experience. I, I'm, I don't want to draw it out. You know, I don't want to make this a big, long thing. But I just thought it would be, for somebody, it might be something you might need to hear that you're not alone in um, having a struggle with finding joy or being joyful, having a joyful heart or, you know, um, finding that happiness. Well, I do understand. I do. So I want to share this story with you and for anybody else who might find that it is helpful. Years ago, about six years ago, I was really, I was, I was a couple years into um, the changes and stuff that the Lord was doing in my life. Big changes, just making me a completely different person. And it was hard. It was, it was, it, I mean, he, taking everything from me, every everything, um, my com my complete way of life, my lifestyle, everything, my things, everything. I was going through a very rough period, and I remember when I was at when I was at work, I would go in um, when I would go to work, I would check my stuff at the door, so I would not bring everything I was going through into work. I did not want it to affect my work. And I wanted to give my best because I had, you know, I worked with clients. I was coaching, I was teaching, and I was, you know, working with the public. I was on the phone. So I didn't want my stuff to, to I didn't want to spill my junk onto them. So I wanted to leave my stuff at the door. So I did. And I just didn't want anybody to know what I was going through. Part of it was I was embarrassed, to be honest. I was embarrassed of what I was going through because there seemed to be no change. And I did, and I did my best to try to make the changes, but... For some reason, they weren't, I know the reasons, but at the time, I was thinking, for some reason, things aren't working for me. And um, money just kept throwing, going through my fingers. That's just one example. And I don't mean by spending frivolously. I mean, it was just one problem after another. I had car issues. My car would break down on a busy freeway. It would overheat. I would have all these different issues, and I'd have to call my job. And at the time, my boss wasn't very sympathetic. She was just like, you need to be here. You got you got to teach this class, you've got clients, and this, and this, and this, and this, and it was, it was, it was very, very difficult, and so I also was on the, I just started a, um, a financial planning program, uh, saving money, you know, I think it's Dave's, Dave Ramsey's program, and I was so excited about it, I was putting all those things into place, but every time I set aside some money, and I was able to put it into, into the little uh, pockets and whatnot. Something always happened where I just didn't have the money. Something would always happen. I'd have to pay this um, huge bill or this needed to happen or something always happened and nothing was going right for me. I was just living day by day the best that I could. I There were times when I didn't have enough food to eat. I had lost a ton of weight because I just didn't I just couldn't eat enough because there wasn't, I didn't have enough money to eat. I had bills to pay. I had to get to work and there was a mess. So um, anyway, so life was pretty darn challenging for me. 
And when I first started on this journey with the Lord, I went, I went in kicking and screaming. I was not happy about it. But when I realized what he was doing by everything going wrong, and I realized that um, he was trying to, he was, you know, he was, things were breaking down so I could surrender and get to him. And he was trying to get my attention is what I'm getting at. He was trying to get my attention, but I was not paying attention. I didn't want to do things his way. I was so angry. And I thought, I got this. I got this. But I didn't got this. So anyway, um, things were just not going well for me at all. So uh, when I did finally surrender, um, it was still very challenging. And so I would go through one thing after another. And it was slow going because for me, I was hard headed. And um, so it made these different trials and tests last long because part of it was like, oh my God, this is my attitude. Oh my gosh, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. And so I'd be reading, I'd be reading my Bible, I'd be praying, I'd be reading other books and stuff, and I would just study. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm just, I'm having a really hard time. And so finally I would get it because I would stop fighting. So I get it. So I'd get through that one. And then something else would happen. And the same thing, it was just a long process. What it always meant to me was that okay, it's, it's, it's more because the Lord uh, made some promises to me. So I was happy and excited about the promises, but in the process of waiting for the promises, there was a lot of work that had to be done on me. So, and I knew that. So given the fact that I knew that, I was more willing to go through these things and allowed God to change me because I knew I had some things that needed to be changes, changed. So, um, so, um, I got used to the different things. So I was going through the process of learning about all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is something I write about. I wrote, I wrote a, a, another book, um, about my growth and uh, in the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is something, this is a story I'm kind of pulling from that. I told many stories about my change, but um, anyway, um, so he was teaching me these different things. I didn't know what they were at the time, but um, that's basically what it was. So I, I would pray in my prayer closet. I'd come home from work, go into my prayer closet, which was my walk-in closet, and I'd sit on the floor and have my quiet time with the Lord because I would be closing off the neighborhood noise, the noises in the house, or anything else, and just have that quiet time and sitting on the floor and just focus on the Lord. And it was really great because I got a lot of, of um, peace and a lot of, of wisdom. And uh, it, was, it was just a beautiful time. And this one time, I was talking with the Lord, and I didn't think I was complaining, but I was. I was complaining about everything that was going on, on, on uh, how things were not working, and how long, and how come, and when. And, and um, then I got real quiet, and then he says to me, you're not happy. <laughs> I was just like, duh. But I didn't say that to him, but that was my attitude. And I was like, <sighs> then I got real quiet and I, I was kind of dumbfounded about the fact basically because he called me out on it and um, he said, you're not happy. And I just sat there and kind of like thinking, <sighs> why would you say that to me? That's not fair with everything that you're saying or everything that you're having me do everything i've gone through everything that i've lost everything the stuff that i go in day in and day out all the time for the last couple of years and i don't see any break anytime soon so you're telling me i'm not happy and this is a problem that is really over the top i can't believe that you're asking me to be happy you're telling me i'm not happy so you're saying i need to be happy and i just sat there like in awe, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. You're, you're, no, I don't want to be happy. Now, who says that? Who says to anybody? And you say it to God, I don't want to be happy. Most people say, I want to be happy. What do you want? I want to be happy. Everybody wants to be happy. But when he said that to me, I was like, I don't want to be happy. And my reason was because I knew that there was no break coming anytime soon. And with everything that I was going through, and he was asking, or he was telling me, 
I'm not happy and I need to be happy. He didn't say you need to be happy. He said you're not happy, but it, what he was saying was you need to be happy. I was just like, um, no, no. And I'm not saying that what I wanted was I wanted to wear my feelings on my sleeve and have everybody see how miserable I was. Yeah, everybody could see how bad my life was. I mean, everybody could see that. But, and it's not that I wanted to go around being mopey. It wasn't that either. But I just did not want to be exhibiting, showing that I was joyful or happy or anything. I was not enjoying my life at all. My, my life consisted of work and being going to church or studying my Bible or reading about the Bible, reading about God, because I was trying to draw close to God. I was trying to draw close to him and gain as much knowledge as possible because I wanted out of the stuff I was in. I wanted out of my funky life. I wanted out. And I knew that I had to spend more time with the Lord. So I was doing the best that I could, right? So um, I had no social life anymore. None. It was non-existent. And I was becoming, you know, I'm, I'm cool with that. I was kind of like a social misfit at that time, which I, I was like, I'm fine. That's fine. I'm gaining knowledge. And that's where my head was at. And um, so I had no social life. So that was my life, was basically work and, and that. So, um, but the Lord wanted me to have, basically wanted me to have a happy attitude, a joyful attitude, a good attitude. Because why? Because I represented him. So if I was so miserable, why would anybody look at me and say, wow, I want what you have. <laughs> I want, I want to be what you are. I want to be a Christian like you. I want to follow God because you are such a shining example. No, <laughs> that was not me. So um, I was not a good representation of God at all because what he was really doing in me was a wonderful thing. And that's what I needed to be talking about. Not how awful my situation was, but how good God is and how much he had changed me, how much he was still changing me. And I needed to be talking about that. And my attitude, my joy needed to come from that, not about my circumstances, not about everything I had gone through, everything I had lost. No, I was supposed to be talking about the changes that he had done in me as a person, as my character. And that was the most important thing. And so I said, okay, Lord, look, I hear what you're saying. I get it. I don't like it, but you're going to have to do this because I don't have it in me because I'm not, basically, I'm not digging this at all. I don't like it at all, but I'm willing because I don't want to fight. I don't want my feet. I don't want my heels in the sand. I want to get this. I want to understand this. And yes, I, I do want to feel real happiness. I don't want it to be fake. I don't want to be a fake. I don't want it to be a fraud. I want to be, I want it to be genuine. So I need you to do this for me because I can't do it. And with that, after that conversation, a couple of days had passed and I had not thought about it again. I went to work the next day and not thought about it at all. Just same old, same old. This went on for a couple of days. And then one day I was on my way to work and traffic as usual was, was bumper to bumper and my car was heating up and thought I was going to have to pull over to the side, but um, it didn't. It just, you know, I was just being careful. And I just didn't let the traffic or anything get to me. I genuinely was starting to fill, fill up with a softer attitude and a softer, gentler me. And that is not who I've ever been in my entire life. And I tell you that, that is the truth. But I felt a difference. And it was like all the stuff that I was going through, they hadn't changed, but the heaviness and the burden of it all was lifted. It, the heaviness was gone. It was, I still had it. I still had the same issues and problems. I still had the same bills and all that kind of stuff. I still have my funky hair, sorry. Um, I still had them, but they weren't weighing me down and I felt lighter. And that began my understanding of what having real joy is. Now, 
I still had to work at it. And then I began to study it. I began to go into my Bible and read what that was all about. I, I read different things about why, why would people go through such hard times and still have a joyful heart? I mean, look at Paul. Look at uh, uh, Job. Look at Joseph. There's many people that went through a hard time. But they didn't have their fist up at God like that. And, and um, well, not that I know of. Um, but the importance of having a, a joyful heart. It is so good for your soul. It helps you. Even if things don't change, your circumstances don't change right away or even soon. Having a joyful heart and a joyful soul, spirit, and being happy, finding what makes you happy. That's why I stress, find what makes you happy and, and, and work on that, whatever it is. Go back to when you were a kid. What made you happy? Did you spend hours drawing? Did you like painting? Did you like walking in the rain? Did you like walking in water puddles? Um, did you like baking? Did you like, well, I don't, whatever it is for you. Tap into those things. I do that. I was, you know, I had a rough week this week. And I, I, I mean, a really rough week. And I got into a really dark funk. And I thought, I had to tap into that. I had myself, I had to say to myself, well, I need to pull myself out of this. I know that I have the power of the Holy Spirit in me. But now, see, now I go to the Holy Spirit and I say, help me. What is, I mean, because I have a lot of different things I'll pull from. Do I feel like drawing today? I'll draw. Do I feel like listening to certain music? I'll do that. Do whatever it is. I've got choices of what it is that's going to lift me at that time. It might be some good gospel music, some alternative Christian music. It, it could be some good R&B. It might be some jazz. Um, I don't know. It could be, may, may not be music. It might be some funny movies. I don't know. Some things that might make me laugh to get out of this funk. Whatever it is, have your set of tools that you can go to to get out of that funk. Because having, a, having that dark cloud that hovers over you, it doesn't make things better. It doesn't. It makes you feel worse. And it can kind of paralyze your spirit that you don't want to do anything. You don't want to try anything, which will lead you down oppression and depression. That's the last place you want to go. So this is what I learned over my, my study of what joy is. And yes, God really, it, it's really important to him that you have joy because you're not, in my experience, you're not um, teachable. He wants to teach us because he wants our lives to be fuller. He wants them to be better. And he, for him to reach you, your heart has to be open. Your spirit has to be open. And mine wasn't. It was, it was cold. It was hard. I was angry. And even though I was walking and doing the right things, my attitude was harsh. It was harsh. I was still somewhat mean to people. Um, I was very curt. I was um, short with them, um, and, I, and I knew better. Even though I knew that God was changing me, my attitude was still awful because I was like, I have not arrived to where I'm supposed to be, and I was very angry. So when things changed in my spirit to be um, more joyful, um, when that changed, it just, got, it just life just got better. It just got better, just in the simplest things, driving, um, going to the grocery store, simple. I mean, because my circle still stayed small for a very, very long time, but still, it was still better. My, my, my job, my work was better. Everything just gets better when you have a, a genuinely happier, joyful spirit. So I wanted to just share a little bit about me. I mean, there's more in my in my book about it I mean I talk more in detail about it in my book this one here um but um I'll put the details about this one in the description down below but anyway that's that's my other book yep I wrote that um last year anyway um I just wanted to share that with you because uh, you know we're hearing so much about people being unhappy and miserable and they're putting it on their on their Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Don't do that. 
Don't do that because it brings other people down. I know when I read that lady's this, that lady's uh, about her unhappiness, she was she. I was reading some some stuff on Facebook, and this lady had commented. It was so negative, because her experience was so negative. So she put it all out there. She wasn't trying to be, but she was, and it made me feel crappy. So I thought, you know what? I want to counter that with my experience and and say to the people that watch me, don't. Don't let that anything, don't let life get to you so much that you get this dark heaviness that stays on your shoulder. Shed that. Okay, just surrender and, you know, that's why I keep saying find those things that make you happy. Get out the coloring book. Hey, they're all out there. They have grown-up coloring books. Get some coloring books, whatever it is. Do a puzzle. Because sometimes it's just, it, it's moments. It's just moments of just a, little, a lot of little things that make you happy. It doesn't have to be some great big huge project. Maybe you want a big project. That's fine too. But don't put the pressure on you. Whatever it is, you know, that's going to bring you some joy. To bring that joy back. Anyway, I know this has been long enough. I was trying to figure out how to make this story short. But anyway... I hope that helps whoever this is supposed to help. I really feel like I was supposed to tell this to somebody. Um, like I said, the story itself is in, is in the book, but um, I just felt like I needed to tell that story for somebody, and I hope it does reach them and helps you. Whoever you are, I hope this helps you a lot, and I hope this does make some sense. And if you want more details about the story, um, I'll put the details, like I said, in the details. So anyway... Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend wherever you are. And if you are in an area where there's a heat wave, stay cool. Drink lots of water. Stay out of the heat. Just find a swimming pool. Go to the river. Go to the lake. But have fun and enjoy yourself and enjoy the people that are around you. Okay, so God bless you, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.